2022 Planning Commission public hearing. My name is Jack Wall and I'm the chairman of the Virginia Beach Planning Commission. Uh, Commissioner uh, David Weiner will not be in attendance uh, today. Before we get started, I've asked uh, Mr. Costin to lead us in prayer, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance by Commissioner Horsley. Please stand. Lord, our Father and our God, we thank you, O God. We hallow and bless thy name. We thank you for all the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. And God, we ask right now as we come to this point of decision, this body to discuss the business of our city, God, we ask that you would look on us and bless us, that you would give us not only fellowship and love, but God, that you would give us wisdom and knowledge, God, that we may make the right decisions. God, we thank you for all that you have done for us, and we bless thy name. Amen. Amen. Would you please join me in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. Um, I've asked uh, Commissioner Redmond to um, introduce the members of the Planning Commission. Well, cool. thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, uh, I'll start on this, uh, what for me is my right, if you're sitting in front of us, that would be your left on the dais. That is Kay Wilson. She is a, um, excuse me, she is a deputy city attorney. Uh, part of her portfolio is uh, planning and zoning matters. She's here, well, she's been here, I guess, all 16 years I've been here. Is that right? I've been here 24. 24 years. <laughs> wow. Um, very impressive uh, in many ways, in fact. And so we have a new member. Uh, this gentleman who is to the left of Kay is Michael Clemens. Um, Michael is a political science professor at Old Dominion University. Um, he represents the Centerville District. It's his first day on the job, so, you know, let's be a little bit uh, gentle with him. Um, he doesn't need it, but uh, in any event, uh, seated, seated next to Michael is Holly Cuellar. Um, Holly is, uh, she serves at large, number one, and she is a consultant. Um, this gentleman next to me is John Costin. John um, also serves at large, and he is a retired fire captain. By the way, if I say something wrong about you, please correct me. Um, my name is Dave Redmond. I'm a commercial real estate broker, uh, and I represent the Bayside District. That is Don Horsley. <laughs> he is a farmer. Uh, he serves at large, um, he, uh, but he resides in the Princess Anne District, represented the Princess Anne District on this body for many, many years, and is, uh, you know, really kind of our <clears throat> most senior member, I would put it that way. Uh, Jack Wall is our uh, chairman. He represents the Rose Hall District and he is an engineer by trade. Our, <coughs> excuse me. Seated next to Jack is um, George Alcaraz. He is the vice chairman uh, of this commission. He, has a, he wears a bunch of different hats. He's, a, he's a, an, a businessman. He is an events promoter. He, congratulations, by the way, um, city council awarded some significant new investment to uh, one of his ventures, which is uh, the East Coast Surfing Championships, which serves this community very well. George has a gigantic uh, hand in that, um, and I think you know city council's obvious confidence in that is um, you know is very impressive. He's also a restaurant owner. He's also a contractor. He does a bunch of different things. Here he is our vice chairman. Um, seated next to him is Dee Oliver. She is a former chairman and a former vice chairman. Um, she serves at large, uh, and she also does a bunch of different things. She has um, uh, interests in the funeral business and some other kinds of businesses. She's an author, um, and she's got a lot of guts, if you can read the newspapers, by the way. Um, uh, that empty chair is where we normally have uh, David Weiner. Uh, David, too, is a former chairman and vice chairman. He represents the Kempsville District. I don't know where he is today, but obviously he wasn't able to be with us. Um, David Bradley. Uh, represents the Princess Anne District, uh, and he uh, is a former budget director for the city of Virginia Beach. Uh, the guy in the seersucker suit, who of whom I am jealous because I used to have a suit like that and don't anymore, um, <laughs> is uh, Barry Frankenfield. Barry is a, a, a he represents the Lynn Haven District. Um, he um, uh, is a former planning director so he, we have known him in that context as well. 
and he is at least semi-retired, as you can tell from that tan. Um, and then seated next to him, um, Mr. Tahan, Bobby Tahan is the planning director. Um, he has uh, a very capable staff, and I'm gonna toss the uh, ball to him so Bobby can introduce uh, some of his team who are here with us today. Thank Mr. You, Tahan. Mr. Redmond. Clerking, clerking today, we have Madison Harris and Pam Stanley. Uh, with the planning administration team, we have Karen Lynn Smith, our planning administrator, Waddell, Marshall Coleman, Michaela McKinney, Elizabeth Nowak, uh, as well as our DSC administrator, Carrie Buchholz, our zoning administrator, Hannah Sabo, uh, the city traffic engineer, uh, Rick Lohman, uh, Brandon Hackney in zoning, Levi Luckenbach, as well as a new planner that we have just hired recently away from another locality, uh, Garrick Hannigan, who is also in our zoning shop now. So we welcome Garrick uh, to the team. Also in the audience, we do have Tori Eisenberg with the city attorney's office. And I may have missed somebody, but that is the staff. Uh, thank you, Mr. Tahan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, I've asked the clerk to describe the rules and order of business for today's meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The, the Virginia Beach Planning Commission takes pride in being fair and courteous to all parties in attendance. It is important that all involved understand how the commission normally conducts its meetings. It is equally important that everyone treat each other and the members of the commission with respect and civility. We request that if you have a cell phone to either silence it or turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bergon. <laughs> Following <laughs> is an abbreviated explanation of the rules. The complete set of rules is located in the front of the Planning Commission agenda. The order of business for this public hearing. Withdrawals and deferrals. The chairman will ask if there are any requests to withdraw or defer an item on the agenda. Consideration of these requests will be made first. Consent agenda. The second order of business is the consideration of the consent agenda, which are those items that the Planning Commission are believe are unopposed and which have favorable staff recommendation. The regular, regular agenda. The Commission will then proceed with the remaining items on the agenda. Today we will have both in-person speakers and speakers participating via WebEx. When an agenda item has been called, we will recognize the applicant or the representative first. Following the applicant or the representative, in-person speakers will be called next and then the speakers participating via WebEx. Speakers in support or opposition of an agenda will have, item will have three minutes to speak unless they are solely representing a large group, such as a Civic League or Homeowners Association, in which case they will have 10 minutes. For WebEx speakers, once your name is called, please pause for two to three seconds to begin to ensure the commissioners hear your complete remarks, as only one audio feed can be open at a time. Do not ask, can you hear me, as you will not be able to hear a response. If a speaker does not respond or if a technical issue occurs, which renders the comments unintelligible, we will move on to the next speaker or the next order of business. Please note that the actions taken today by the Planning Commission are in a form of a recommendation to the Virginia Beach City Council. The final decision to approve or disapprove an application will be made by the City Council. The Commission thanks you for your attendance and we hope that your experience here today leaves you feeling that you have been heard and treated fairly. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, the, next, um, the next order of business is the consideration of requests to withdraw or defer an item. Um, if you have an item to be withdrawn, withdrawn first, uh, please come forward. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hold on. Um, we got one, one item for withdrawal. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Chairman, for the record, Eddie Berdon, Virginia's attorney, uh, representing uh, case number nine, Schweitzer, Gray, and Nelson, which is being withdrawn, but we'll be back in a different form next month. Okay. Um, Thank you. And, and uh, Professor Clemens, welcome. Thank welcome. you very much. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do I have a motion to withdraw agenda item number nine? So moved. Okay. Um, second. Okay, we have a, a motion by Mr. Horsley and a second by Ms. Oliver. Um, are there any planning commissioners abstaining on these, these items to be withdrawn or item? Um, I, I do have a declaration to make you know, concerning this agenda item. Um, I have on file a uh, disclosure uh, regarding the um, Planning Commission discussion and vote on, on this agenda item um, of uh, Joyce Nelson, Shelley Gray, Schweitzer, and, and Suzanne Gray at uh, 2748 West Landing Road, um, number nine on the, the July Planning Commission agenda. Um, I will disclose that I have no financial interest and uh, I will be voting on this matter um, at today's uh, Planning Commission public hearing. Vote is open. Mr. Clemens. Okay. 
By recorded vote of 10 in favor, zero against, agenda item number nine has been withdrawn. Okay, thank you. All right, if you, um, if you have an item to be deferred, please come forward. Mr. Chairman, uh, for the record, Rob Beeman, local uh, land use attorney, uh, here for the applicant on items three and eight. We request a 30-day deferral on item three, please, and an uh, indefinite deferral on item eight. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, anything else? Uh, again, Mr. Chairman, Eddie Burdon, Virginia Beach Attorney, representing um, Rudolph. Um, General Booth on case number two and indefinite deferral, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Does anybody have any objections to these items being deferred? Um, do I have a motion to uh, defer agenda item number three for 30 days and um, an agenda and agenda items number two and eight indefinitely? So moved. Okay. Um, motion by Ms. Oliver. Second. Okay. And a second by Mr. Horsley. Um, is there anyone that is uh, abstaining from these um, from this vote? Okay. Vote is open. By recorded vote of ten in favor, zero against, agenda items two and eight have been deferred indefinitely, and agenda item number three has been deferred for thirty days. Okay. Thank you. The next order of business is the consent agenda, and I'm going to turn that over to the vice chair to run that portion of the meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Today we have 17 items on the consent agenda. These are applications that are recommended for approval by staff, and the Planning Commission has concurred. And there are no speakers signed up in opposition. Uh, item, or agenda item number one, City of Virginia Beach an ordinance to amend a section of 401 of the city zoning ordinance pertaining to small-scale agricultural processing as permitted uses in the agricultural zoning district. City staff come to speak on that. Good afternoon. Hannah Sabo, Zoning Administrator. Uh, this is an ordinance uh, to amend section 401 of the city zoning ordinance pertaining to small-scale agricultural processing as permitted uses in the Agricultural Zoning District. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, this amendment is sponsored by Councilmember Henley. Uh, this was uh, brought forth as a request of the Agricultural Advisory Commission back in 2021, 20, uh, and we've been working with them on this amendment ever since. And it, the Agricultural Advisory Commission did vote to support this amendment at their meeting on Monday, July 11th, 2022. There are a number of existing agricultural uses that are already permitted in the Agricultural 1 and 2 districts, including um, agriculture, orchards, vineyards, nurseries, uh, along with um, agricultural product sales up to 3,500 square feet by right, and then with a conditional use permit over that, as well as farm, uh, farm wineries, farm breweries, and farm distilleries. There are three uses that we're adding to the agricultural districts. The first one is small-scale processing or packaging of livestock in conjunction with a bona fide agricultural livestock operation on the same parcel, uh, not exceeding 250 head of livestock per year. Does not include the processing of livestock. The second use is the small-scale processing of poultry, again, in conjunction with a bona fide agricultural poultry operation on the same parcel, not exceeding 20,000 uh, poultry per, per year, and that does include the slaughter of poultry. And then the third use is the small-scale processing, extracting, packaging, or fabricating of agricultural product in conjunction with the bona fide agricultural operation on that same parcel. Um, the maximum processing area is not to exceed 3,500 square feet and does not include the area for storage, and that does not include the processing of livestock or poultry. And again, this is an ordinance to amend Section 401 of the City Zoning Ordinance pertaining to small-scale agricultural processing um, as permitted uses in the Agricultural Zoning District. Thank you for that. Is there any opposition to this item being placed on the consent agenda? Hearing none. Um, she just read it. Yeah. So, so you don't want to make yeah, a motion? One. Next one? Next one. Push on. All right. Sorry about that. Items number four and five together, SXCW Properties, LLC for uh, conditional rezoning, AG2 Agricultural District to conditional B2 
business district for a car wash facility. Please come forward and state your name. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen of the Planning Commission. For the record, Billy Garrington on behalf of the applicant. The applicant is XSCW Properties 2 LLC, conditional rezoning and a conditional use permit for a car wash on Fisher's Arch in the Sandbridge section of the City of Virginia Beach. There are four conditions in the staff write-up and four proffers also in the staff write-up. We're in total agreement with the uh, recommendations by your staff, and we thank you for putting this on the consent agenda. Thank you. Is there any opposition to this item being placed on the consent agenda? <coughs> Hearing none, I ask Commissioner Dave Bradley to uh, read this item for the record. The applicant is requesting to rezone a 2.6 acre site along Sandbridge Road from AG2 Agricultural District to conditional B2 Community Business District as well as a conditional use permit to construct and operate a car wash facility. The property is on the corner of Sandbridge Road and Fisher Arch and per the comprehensive plan is within the transition area. The pro proffered plan depicts a 4,115 square foot single bay car wash building with four parking spaces designated for employees and 20 sp spaces designated with vacuum stations. The proposal meets the parking requirements set forth in the zoning ordinance. Uh, staff recommends this and since there were no known uh, speakers in opposition, we decided to put it on our consent agenda. Thank you. Item number seven, William M. and Joni Green, co-trustees of the William M. Green Revocable Trust and co-trustees of the Joni Green Revocable Trust for alternative residential development at 1900 Landing Road. Please come forward. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman, Chairman Wald, members of the commission. For the record, Eddie Berdon, Virginia Beach attorney, um, representing the Green family. Uh, Ms. Joni Green is here today along with her daughter, adult daughter, for whom um, who will be building the house on the lot that's proposed for her family. Um, we appreciate WAS assistance with this application. All three conditions as recommended by staff are acceptable and appreciate being on the consent agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any opposition to this item being placed on the consent agenda? Hearing none, I've asked Commissioner uh, Ms. Quaylar to uh, speak on this. Um, the Green family is the applicant um, on this permit and is requesting a conditional use permit for alternative residential development to subdivide an existing 18.12 acre parcel into two lots for the construction of one additional dwelling. The proposal lot, excuse me, the proposed lot A will be 15.1 acres containing the existing dwelling and the proposed lot B will be 3.02 acres to be developed with the new dwelling. Both lots will meet the development standards for property zone AG2 agricultural district, district seeing no opposition. The commission recommends approval for the consent agenda. Thank you. Next item is item number 10 for Hunter Mill Apartments LLC for conditional rezoning at 397 Brixton Drive, parcel west of 5444 Virginia Beach Boulevard. Please come forward. Good afternoon, uh, Vice Chair, Chairman, members of the Planning Commission. For the record, my name is Lisa Murphy, local land use attorney, and I'm here today on behalf of the applicant and the owner. Uh, we appreciate, uh, although it may not appear it from the staff report and from what you have in front of you, um, staff has spent a tremendous amount of time working with us on this. Um, it seems like a relatively straight, straightforward expansion, but believe me, there's a whole lot uh, behind the scenes that went into it. So we appreciate being placed on the consent agenda. And I'm happy to answer any questions. All right, thank you. Is there any opposition to this item being placed on the consent agenda? Hearing none, uh, I've asked Mr. Costin to please speak on this matter. The applicant is requesting to rezone three parcels totaling 12.12 .12 acres from A18 Apartment District and B2 Community Business District to conditional A18 Apartment District to construct two additional multifamily buildings within an existing family, multifamily residential community, resulting in an overall density of 17.82 units per acre. The Hunters Mill Apartment <coughs> community constructed in 1986 is located on parcel A, and uh, it's roughly 10.6 acres, and uh, parcel B is Six acres is currently developed with 15 multifamily buildings totaling 180 dwelling units. 
The applicant intends to purchase parcel C to expand the existing residential apartment community. Parcel C, uh, approximately 0.9 acres, uh, will be constructed with two buildings comprised of 18 dwellings units each, increasing the number of dwelling units for the community from 180 to 216. The interior lot lines will be vacated for parcel B and will be incorporated to the site plan to remain as open space. Uh, staff has recommended approval of this item and uh, the Planning Commission concurs. Therefore, we're placing it on the consent agenda. Thank you. The next item is uh, item number 11 for Thomas Mark Goldsberry at home occupation at 1104 <coughs> Tree Fern Place. Please come forward. State your name. Good afternoon. My name is Thomas Mark Goldsberry. Do you accept all the conditions? Yes, I do. Thank you. You may be seated. Is there any opposition to this item being placed on the consent agenda? Hearing none, I ask Ms. Oliver to please read this for the record. The applicant is requesting a conditional use permit for a home occupation to operate a gunsmithing business within his attached garage of a single family dwelling in the, in the Bird, Le Bird Neck Lakes neighborhood. The applicant is a retired veteran with 28 years of service and over 30 years of experience in working with guns. He intends to restore old, dilapidated, and antique guns. There will be no sales of firearms from this residence, no sign or advertisements are proposed for the property, and it is anticipated that by appointment only, no more than one customer per week will be on site. There will be no other employees that are proposed for this business. As required by federal law, the applicant will obtain a federal firearms license through the Borough of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, and all firearms will be secured in the home according with ATF regulations. He intends to store his firearms in locked and secured vaults. This, no this applicant has uh, notified his adjacent neighbors. He has had several um, letters of support along with the um, Civic Lake has supported this business in the, um, in the neighborhood. The applicant's agreeable to the conditions. Staff finds this um, proposed meets the requirements for home occupations, and therefore the commission has placed it on the consent agenda. Thank you. The next agenda item is number 12, Witch Duck Real Property Incorporated for conditional rezoning at, at 122 Mack Street. Please come forward as far as the representative. State your name. Good afternoon again, Lisa Murphy for the record, local land use attorney on behalf of um, Breeden Investment Properties, which is the contract purchaser and in support of this application. Uh, we appreciate all of the kind words that you all said about the project. I know Breeden's very excited about it. Uh, it'll be a tremendous thing for the city. Uh, to, to the chairman's question at the informal session, the contract isn't contingent on the owner finding a new location. Uh, my understanding is he's looking for a new location, uh, but he'd have to comply with, you know, your zoning ordinance and, and find a new location. Uh, I'm sure Kay's rolling her eyes. Uh, find a new location that would be suitable uh, in the city or elsewhere. So I'm um, happy to answer any other questions, but we appreciate all of staff's work on this and being placed on the consent agenda. Thank you. Is there any opposition to this item being placed on the consent agenda? Hearing none, I've asked Commissioner Redmond to please read this for the record. Thank you, Mr. Alcaraz. This is an application of Witch Duck Real Property, Inc. for a conditional rezoning from I-2 Heavy Industrial to conditional A-36 Apartment District. I'm at 122 Mack Street in the Bayside District, which is just off of Witch Duck Road in close proximity to Interstate 64. In fact, this is a very visible site from Interstate 264. Um, and I think many would recognize it if they, you know, if they don't recognize it already. This applicant is requesting to rezone a 12.26 acre parcel from I-2 Heavy Industrial to conditional A-36 to redevelop the property with a 438 unit multifamily residential community with a resulting density of 35.72 units per acre. This property is located within the Pembroke Strategic Growth Area, but it's currently being utilized for heavy industrial activity with multiple uses consisting of 
an industrial warehouse, a scrap materials stockpile, bulk storage, and a recycling center. If you are familiar with the site, you will recognize it as an eyesore. Um, it is a very old, um, very degraded, um, uh, very under, um, very unkempt, very, not very well kept site. Thank you um, uh, to those at the computer. Uh, this use um, is not only, uh, this multifamily use of 438 units is not only uh, uh, very necessary in Virginia Beach, it's very welcome, I think, in this particular part of the city. There's been a lot of investment. Um, the city's made a lot of investment in Witch Duck Road, uh, the, the widening of that um, and better integrating it with the highway and the other projects. Um, there has been a fair amount of investment and development activity, and it's all very much to the community's benefit. This is an enormous improvement to this site. It's just a terrific improvement to this site. The uh, staff saw it that way and recommended approval. Uh, there is no opposition uh, to this, uh, and so we have deemed it to be worthy of our consent agenda and gladly at that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, agenda item number 13, Glorious Grooming LLC for home occupation at 140 Southcombe Avenue. Please come forward on who's speaking. Hi, can you state your name for the record? My name is Erin Lake. I'm the um, owner and sole employee of Glorious Grooming LLC. Are the conditions acceptable to you? Yes. All right, thank you. Thank you. Is there any opposition to this item being placed on the consent agenda? Hearing none, I ask uh, Ms. Uh, Commissioner Frankenfield to please read this for the record. All right, <clears throat> thank you, sir. Uh, this applicant is requesting a conditional use permit for a home occupation to operate a pet grooming business within a single family dwelling in the Glenwood neighborhood. Uh, the applicant is, is desiring to uh, groom pets in a 170 square foot room within the, fam within the dwelling. Uh, it is anticipated there will be a maximum of three customers per day. Pets will be groomed by appointment Pets will be dropped off at the residence before the appointment and picked up at the conclusion of the service. No exterior changes are proposed and no signage is proposed. Uh, the applicant will be the sole operator of the grooming business. There will be no other employees. Uh, hours of operation will be 9 to 5, Monday through Friday. Uh, in staff's opinion um, and the commission's opinion, uh, this proposal will not negatively affect the character of the neighborhood and will not adversely affect surrounding properties. Uh, based on staff support and this information, Planning Commission recommends approval. Thank you. The next agenda item is number 14 for Catherine Ann Olivas for a uh, conditional use permit for a family daycare at 2717 Inglewood Lane. Please come forward. Mr. Vice Chair, okay. this applicant is WebEx. Catherine Ann Olivas, please pause for two to three seconds while we unmute your audio feed and then state your name and if the conditions of your application are acceptable. Hello. Uh, yes, they are acceptable. My name is Catherine Olivas. Thank you. Is there any opposition to this item being placed on the consent agenda? Hearing none, I've asked Commissioner uh, Ms. Oliver to read this for the record. Thank you. This applicant is requesting a conditional use permit to operate a family daycare home um, for up to 12 children within her single family dwelling in the Glenwood neighborhood. The applicant has 13 years of experience caring for children and now she wishes to increase the number above from four to 12, which requires a conditional use permit. The designated outdoor play area is located in the backyard and is enclosed with a six foot tall solid privacy fence and the proposed hours are of operation are from 7 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Monday through Friday. Staff recommended a condition that pick up and drop off times be staggered and limitation to only one home to alleviate a potential for congestion of the right of way. In staff's view, the family daycare home provides a needed and valuable service, and in this instance, the proposal is not expected to be detrimental in any 
To any adjacent land uses, based on these considerations, staff recommended approval. The applicant is agreeable to the conditions enclosed, and therefore the Planning Commission has put it on the consent agenda. Thank you. The next uh, agenda item is number 16, Robluski Art, LLC, for conditional use permit for a tattoo parlor at 1329 Oceana Boulevard, Suite 110. Please come forward. Mm -hmm. I think that's number 15. 15. <laughs> yeah. My this is Mark Robleski. And Jessica Robleski. All right. You accept the condition? We, we do. accept. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Is there any opposition to this item being placed on the consent agenda? All right. Hearing none, I ask uh, Commissioner uh, Horsley to please read this for the record. Thank you, sir. Uh, the condition of the we, this applicant is requesting a condition of use permit to operate a traditional tattoo parlor. This parlor will be operated in a uh, shopping center along Oceana Boulevard and on property that is owned B2 community business in a com B2 community business district. Um, the, the tattoo parlor is consistent with the comprehensive plans land use policies and is consistent with the co commercial nature of the surrounding business. It happens to be in the 75 decibel noise zone of the uh, for ACUs, and but these restrictions don't apply to tattoo parlor. But some of these noise restrictions don't apply to the tattoo parlor. Mm -hmm. So the staff thinks that this is a compatible use with the area. It it, uh, it is consistent with the comprehensive plan. Uh, it won't increase the traffic. It's been determined that. So staff thinks it's a, a good policy, and the commission does too. So we placed it on our con consent agenda. Thank you. The next agenda item is number sixteen for three sixty. Is that sixty five? Mm -hmm. Three sixty five Tattoo LLC for a tattoo parlor at thirty five hundred Virginia Beach Boulevard. Please come forward and state your name, sir. My name is Antonio Almazan. And you accept the conditions? Yes. Thank you, sir. Is there any opposition to this item being placed on the consent agenda? Mm -hmm. All right, hearing none, I ask Commissioner Frankenfield to please read this for the record. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, this applicant is requesting a conditional use permit in order to operate a traditional tattoo parlor. The unit is located within the Little Neck Towers along Virginia Beach Boulevard. Uh, tattooing will take place uh, within the building by appointment only. Uh, there may be up to six to seven employees anticipated. Mm -hmm. Typical hours of operation are 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. There will be no exterior changes to the building uh, and no new signage. Uh, in staff's opinion and supported by the commission, the request for a conditional use permit for a tattoo parlor is consistent with the comprehensive plan, land use policy, and the uh, Rosemont Strategic Growth Area Plan. Uh, the unit is within the Little Neck Towers building and will be virtually indetectable. Uh, but I hope your business does well. It'll be indetectable, um, so uh, you don't even know it's there. So uh, for all those reasons, uh, staff and commission recommend uh, approval of this application. Thank you. The next agenda item is number 17, the U.S. Surf Company Incorporated. Uh, for an alternative compliance for recurring special events, outdoor recreational facility at 2017 Arctic Avenue and 317 20th Street. So state your name, sir. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Vice Chairman, Chairman, Members, Planning Commission. My name is Kyle Corte, uh, Virginia Beach Attorney. I represent the applicant U.S. Surf Company and the property owner, Sensations Realty, and all the conditions are acceptable. Thank you. Is there any opposition to this item being placed on the consent agenda? <clears throat> Hearing none, I ask Commissioner Bradley to read this for the record. The applicant is requesting a special exception for alternative compliance for recurring outdoor special events for outdoor recreation sp facility, specifically for a skate park. The skate park is currently in operation. There have been numerous special events, including skate camps and contests, along with many other events that have been held on the property over the years. The request is to bring the site into compliance and obtain the proper permits. The zoning lot for this proposal spans between 20th Street and 21st Street along the east side of 
Arctic Avenue and consists of three parcels. Staff recommends this uh, item. There are no, no speakers against it, so we decided, the Planning Commission decided to put it on the consent agenda. Thank you. The next uh, item is uh, agenda item number 18 for Usri Farragala at uh, 314A 29th Street for a short-term rental. Please come forward. Mr. Vice Chair, the speaker, the applicant is also WebEx. Yusri Farragala, please pause for two to three seconds while we unmute your audio feed and then state your name and if the conditions of your application are acceptable. This is Yusri Farragala, the owner, and uh, I accept the conditions. All right, thank you. Is there any opposition to this item being placed on the consent agenda? Hearing none, I ask Commissioner Quaylar to read this for the record. The applicant is requesting a conditional use permit to operate a three-bedroom, 2,472-square-foot short-term rental on the subject site. The regulations for short-term rental use and identified in Section 241.2 and Article 2300 of the City's Zoning Ordinance. Staff recommends for approval, and the Commission recommends for approval to the consent agenda. Thank you. Next item is number 19 for Lori and Stuart Golwag for a short-term rental at 2002 Baltic Avenue. Please come forward. State your name for the record, please. Lori Goldwag. Do you accept the conditions? I do. Thank, thank you. 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 Maybe see. Is there any opposition to this item being placed on the consent agenda? Hearing none, I ask Commissioner Bradley again to please read this for the record. The applicant is requesting a conditional use permit to operate a three-bedroom, 2,472-square-foot short-term rental on the subject site. The regulations for short-term rental use are identified in Section 241.2 and Article 2300 of the City Zoning Ordinance. Staff recommended this uh, item. There's no known opposition, and Planning Commission puts it on our uh, consent agenda. Thank you. Agenda item number 20 for Jennifer and Joseph Bailey, short-term rental at uh, 303 Atlantic Avenue, Unit 1404. Please come forward. State your name for the record, please. Marcy Chapman, Property Manager at Berkshire Hathaway. I'm here to represent Jennifer and Joseph Bailey, and we accept. Thank you. Is there any opposition to this item being placed on the consent agenda? Hearing none, I ask Commissioner uh, Oliver um, to please read this. This applica um, applicant is requesting to operate a two-bedroom, 943-square-foot short-term rental in the Dolphin Run Condominium Tower, located at 303 Atlantic Avenue, Unit 1404. Um, it meets the requirements of the city ordinance for short-term rental, and therefore we have put it on the consent agenda. Thank you. The next uh, item is uh, item number 21 for Niccolo, Nikolai Georgi for short-term rental. Sorry about that. 303 Atlantic Avenue, Unit 402. Please come forward. Mr. Vice Chair, he's also WebEx. Thank you. Calling Nikola Georgiev. If you would pause two to three seconds while we unmute your audio feed, and then please state your name and if the conditions of your application are acceptable. Hello there, this is Nick Georgiev. I accept all the conditions. Thank you. Is there any opposition to this item being placed on the consent agenda? Hearing none, I ask uh, Commissioner Oliver to speak on this. This applicant is requesting to operate a two-bedroom short-term rental located in the Dolphin Run Condominium Tower at 303 Atlantic Avenue, Unit 402, located in the Oceanfront Resort short-term rental overlay district. It meets the requirements of the city ordinance for short-term rentals. Therefore, the commission has placed it on the consent agenda. Thank you. And the last item for consent is item number 22 for Philip Fletcher for short-term rental at 303 Atlantic Avenue, Unit 1400. Please come forward. State your name, sir, for the record. Philip Fletcher. Thank you. Do you accept the conditions? Yes, I do. All right. Thank you. You may be seated. Right, thank you. 
Is there any opposition to this item being in place on the consent agenda? Hearing none, I ask uh, Commissioner Oliver to please re read this for the record. Thank you. This applicant is requesting to operate a three-bedroom short-term rental located within the Dolphin Run Condominium Tower on Atlantic Avenue, 303, Unit 1400, located in the Oceanfront Short-Term Rental Overlay District. It meets the requirements of the city ordinance for short-term rental, and therefore the commission has placed it on the consent agenda. Thank you. Mr. Chair, that was the last item on the consent agenda. The Planning Commission places the following applications on the consent agenda. Items number one, four, five, seven, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Um, first, I'm going to do a motion. We have quite a few items on the consent agenda. I'm going to do the um, going to ask for a motion, and then we're going to get to the abstentions. I think there are a couple. But um, so, do I have a motion to approve by consent agenda items one, four, and five, seven, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19, 20, 21, and 22. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Alcaraz and a second by Mr. Horsley. Um, are there any abstentions? Yes. On number 17, I have on file in the Planning Commission meeting files a disclosure regarding the July Planning Commission discussion and vote on number 17, U.S. Surf Company Incorporated at 2017 Arctic Avenue. I will abstain from voting or discussion of this matter at the July 13, 2022 Planning Commission public hearing. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman I have a, a letter on file with the city attorney's office abstaining from uh, all STR applications and ordinances, that short-term rental applications and ordinances. I, uh, in this meeting, that would be agenda items number 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. I will be in support of the of the um, consent agenda, but specifically abstaining from those uh, agenda items 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Vote is open. By recorded vote of 10 in favor, zero against, agenda items 1, 4, 5, 7, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16 have been recommended for approval by consent. Agenda item no number 17, by a vote of nine in favor, zero against, with Commissioner Alcaraz abstaining, is recommended for approval by consent. And agenda items 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22, by a vote of nine in favor, zero against, with Commissioner Redmond abstaining, are recommended for approval by consent. Okay, thank you. Um, if you had an application that was on the consent agenda, uh, your request will now be scheduled for an upcoming city council meeting. Um, staff will contact you about the dates. Um, for those applicants on the consent agenda, thank you for your participation. You may remain in the meeting, um, either virtually or in person, but uh, you're free to leave. And the next order of business will be the regular agenda. Um, we're going to wait for a minute. Okay. Okay, Madam Clerk, come. we're ready for the first item. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Our next agenda item is agenda item number six, Winners Properties, LLC. It's an application for a modification of conditions on property located at 3700 and 3736 Santera Way in District 3, formerly the Rose Hall District. Okay. 
Good, thank you. Please state your name for, for the record. I will, Mr. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen of the Planning Commission, for the record, Billy Garrington on behalf of the applicant, Winners Properties, LLC. Sintera Drive, 3700, 3736 Sintera Way, I'm sorry. We thank you for hearing this case again today, Mr. Chairman. We have used up an unusual amount of your time and of your staff's time on this request, and we certainly hope that today will be the last time that we that we use up some of your time. But it's sometimes you run into one like this that has a heartbeat of its own, and this one certainly has a heartbeat of its own. So to refresh your <clears throat> your memory on this, as you recall, we were back here back in February, and the original plan was to take this entire wooded parcel here and develop that for the new Genesis dealership that had significant opposition from the neighborhood, from the BMX bicycles, and from the staff too. So that plan was turned down by city council. The plan that we have now is that you would take the Genesis dealership and put it on this existing Hyundai dealership, which has been there for 27 years, 25 years, I'm sorry, having been built back in 1990. 97 when it was the auto nation dealership and it is now the checkered flag so that's the request that you have now the new dealership would be placed as you see here part of this wooded area that we were originally trying to develop will be redeveloped again for additional parking but it won't be the entire wooded parcel that you see the rest of it will be dedicated conveyed to the city of virginia beach you've got a significant buffer along the front here 50 feet to buffer any of that parking lot from these existing homes over here along uh, Windsor Oaks West. And I got to tell you, since we were here in February, the people from Checkered Flag have been meeting with the Civic League and the residents that live in that area, and they have made significant strides along some of the areas that we had that were a concern. And those concerns were on street parking, which we had a problem with, and, and that has been resolved and is, is going to be resolved even better. You had the noise from the cars that were being unloaded, noise from the burglar alarm that was on the building. You had all kind of problems, even with the lawn care people that were coming at, at, at odd hours of, the, of the, the day. The dumpster that was being delivered and, and dumped at odd hours of the morning, so we've tried to work with that. Offloading of vehicles on the public right away that were, taking, that were being done, and we're, we're addressing that, and the last one was lighting. You've got some lights that filter over into the neighborhood along the front of that new uh, of the, the front of the Hyundai. We are in the process of taking shields and put on the light fixtures that are there to shield that down to make sure that we don't eliminate the, the areas next door. So it's not like the, the, the checkered flag people have not done anything since we were here in February because they have been trying to work with them. Haven't made them 100 percent happy, and I don't think not to, to I don't think there's any way we could make them 100 percent happy, but we have we have addressed the items that we can. So if you were to take just the staff write up that you have in front of you today with the 29 conditions that are in there, we're in agreement with those 29 conditions and we would be well on our way to getting this approved. But you still have opposition from the neighbors in regards to the request, even with those 29 conditions that you see there today. So I'm here to tell you that we're in agreement with the staff's write up. Uh, and Kyle Corte will expound upon that a little bit more, and then we'll hear from the opposition and see if we can rebut their, their, their opposition and tell you what we can and can't do to make this a better situation. But again, this is a dealership that's been there for 25 years, and uh, we're, we're, we're going on to that existing lot with the new dealership. Uh, we're, we're not taking all those trees down that we were before, if you remember, and I'm sure your memory is very good, you had them talking about red tail hawks, you had them talking about foxes, you had them talking about all kind of wildlife that we were going to displace. Uh, that's not, that whole area is not being developed anymore like it was on our original request. Okay, thank you. Um, did you say Mr. Corte is going to speak as well? Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Um, right directly after you? He's coming as up a, right now. Okay. All right. Mr. Well, I don't know how you follow up, Mr. Garrington. Uh, this is Kyle Corte again. I represent uh, the checkered flag uh, dealerships and a lot of their uh, matters pending in the area. Um, I will reiterate what Mr. Garrington said, simply the efforts that have been made to accommodate uh, the staff's recommendations, the staff's conditions, and to meet with and communicate with the neighbors and address any and every concern that uh, could be addressed uh, on their behalf. 
I understand that you may hear from uh, some folks today regarding uh, potentially a location of that entranceway uh, to the west of the property. Uh, the uh, final location of that, there's a desire, I understand it, to have the, uh, the entranceway remain where it is and just expand the parking lot to the left. Uh, based upon the communications with Checkered Flag and the different uh, folks that are uh, in charge of the operations, that is an untenable solution because they need the entranceway to be as far to the west as it can be for the purposes of unloading and loading the vehicles that were, as you may recall, a source of significant disruption in the community. Um, to have that drive lane there where the cars can, or the uh, trailer can go up there and, and drop them off. The parking spots you see to the west are going to be the dedicated employee parking places, such that we're not disrupting uh, customer flow, uh, service flow, or uh, any of, of the uh, potential customers that want to test drive vehicles. So as I understand it, and, and subject to being surprised shortly, I believe that is the uh, chief uh, objection as it sits here today from, from the neighbors. And we've, uh, uh, Check and Flag has made the, uh, every accommodation we could such that the, uh, the drive entranceway there, as you'll see on the plan, it, you know, it, it will, uh, just based on the location, it will impact some mature trees. But the, uh, the concession there was both the buffer area uh, all the way to 50 feet to allow for the, uh, the view corridor from the neighborhood, some noise uh, buffering, and just aesthetically to the neighborhood to keep all the mature trees that, that can be in place. And the conditions that um, Mr. Dow and the city staff have put in place uh, to require uh, other than uh, that particular area where there will be the entranceway for the mature trees to remain in place, which we've, we've agreed to. Uh, and to add what landscaping would be necessary to satisfy the city's uh, requirements as far as uh, street landscaping. And I welcome any questions or, or uh, any issues that may need further explanation if, if Mr. Garrington or myself didn't do a sufficient job. Mr. Corday, I have a, a question. The, the buffer, um, I guess, to the left where the, par the employee parking lot is, that's, that's a, because the, the drawing is short. Yes, ma'am. The other side of that is the Sentara Hospice House, right? Uh, uh, eventually, yes, ma'am. What you're seeing there is, you want to flip in that one, Mr. Dow? Is there an, okay. Um, so what you're seeing there, the part that's shaded blue is going to be the new parking, parking lot, lot, or the proposed parking lot. The, it's 1.3 acres there is the parcel that Checkered Flag or Checkered Flag entity is under contract to purchase is that entire parcel that's outlined there. Mm -hmm. Uh, the plan is to develop at closing or after closing, develop the blue portion into the parking lot that's being proposed today. That green portion uh, will be uh, it, under the plan, it's going to remain as is. The ultimate plan is to convey it to the city. And I understand there's some discussions there of how the neighborhood wants it. Do they want it to remain wooded and undeveloped or with a park or a city? You know, but that at the point it's conveyed away, it's, it's not ours. That 50 foot buffer you see is our property. That, that we'll be in charge of maintaining as a buffer. That'll in have the front? Yes, ma'am. On guess that, that, on, Yes, ma'am. The southern portion of the parcel that abuts in Terraway. Okay. Yes, so that's the part that they are addressing, not not to the left, not the woods, that no, separate I, the hospice house from the parking lot. As I understand it, the, the woods uh, that, that uh, are, are, we're going to leave them completely untouched. Right. There's no objection there. As I understand it, you see the current, in that plan, you see the entranceway. Uh -huh. That entranceway will be landscaped with trees and the entranceway will be moved to the far western portion, almost to where the green is. Okay. And so the objection is that entranceway, as I understand the objection, that entranceway will require the removal of some mature trees there. And that's, okay. that's, uh, that's just, uh, I mean, just a, it, yeah. it's the nature of the, you know, unfortunately, um, you know, we've tried to, the trees. I, I heard the comparison of it's, it's like cutting a pumpkin. We're trying to cut the pumpkin with the minimal amount of cuts and that, that is where we are as far as as far as having that development there. Got it, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, Sir? I've got a few questions. So you've got the, the box outlined there. Yes, sir. Um, it looks like it goes up to the, the edge of pavement up to uh, Centura Way. Does that, are you, you're not including that 50 feet as part of the dedicated right way of Centura Way. No, no, yeah, sir. That's no, 50 is... feet outside of the it, It's the 50 feet of the, of, 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 of their, the a buffer. Right. right, yes, sir. Okay. Um, and, you know, up to the point of, um, you know, if that green area, the 113 feet, yes, sir. that's dedicated to the, 
to the city, um, or if the city It'll be dedicated conveyed. or conveyed you know, or condemned. Conveyed We're in the process condemned. of sorting through that. Um, just okay, and then when would that? I mean, not necessarily when is it going to occur, but when is it going to? If you know this is what gets you know approved by city council, sure. When would that say? I can. What assurances do we have that that's going to take place? You know, the assurances in the uh, in the the application, the conditions, and are that that green area will re will remain uh, as is. Okay. And it, it's labeled as being conveyed to the city because that's the ultimate intention. Part of the conditions. Okay. Yes. Yep. That's that's correct. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, one one thing that you know, we received a little bit of you know, discussion on is the um, the signage for the for the property, and that's the you know, signage of the. Uh, I think in terms of the branding or trademark, you know, checkered flag itself, um, that it doesn't necessarily have to be lit necessarily from the the ground up; that it can be lit from. Are we the, are we doing the flag? I'm talking about the flag. Yes. Oh, understand. Okay. Yes, the flag. Okay. The flag and, that's, and that's up against the interstate. That's kind of in condition number twenty six. That everything is supposed to be shielded downward, um, but for some reason the flag is left left out of that that shielding. Yes, sir. So I, I believe there's a way though to to direct that light downward. See, here's uh, the the issue. Here's and we're the. Just to orient everyone, the flag is, I guess, to the northern portion of that parcel, uh, almost to the BMP. Do you, um, is there a pointer? Or any, is, is that up there? I think it's the, <coughs> right there on the edge of the. Oh. If, okay. if you can get it to work. You know, there, you go. there we go. Yeah. It's there. In roughly this area right here. So the flag is, is roughly 500 feet away from the. So the flag's right, like, give or take, right there. Okay. And I, I have not measured. I believe uh, city staff measured it from the no, from the Centera Way border. Um, I I can't represent to you the exact distance, um, but I can tell you it's it's right right next to the BMP. Okay. And it's the flag if you're on that. Obviously, it's 264 at the at the top of the depiction there. And if you uh, if you drive, they have the the checkered flag blowing in the wind there, mm -hmm. and the uh, there are lights that are at the 14 foot level, maximum level, that I did not realize there were lights, candidly, until I walked the site. But uh, when, you, when you see them, they shine up directing towards, towards the flag. And the condition is uh, save and accept uh, those two lights. All the lights are 14 feet, which is uh, under code, and then uh, directed downward. Okay. And then the Centera, if you recall, when we were here, you know, I, I, time escapes me, but whenever we were last here, the lights adjacent to Centera Road, you'll see a condition in there there was an, a potential light pollution issue from those lights to the adjacent properties on the far side of Centera Way, I guess to the south of the parcel. And the, you'll see a condition in there that requires any lights within 25 feet of Centera Way to be shielded such that no light would go, I guess, be directed to the south. Um, how many, how many of those flags, per se, do you, like, your business, you're quite a few checkered flag businesses. Does yes, sir. each one have one of those? Uh, generally have them? I, I, they generally, they have checkered flags. Uh, whether whether every location, Bill, or Mr. Garrington may know. I, I, I know I've driven by or I, when I visit the, the various uh, dealerships. There are checkered flags there, but I can't represent to you that everyone or what number has. I, I simply right. don't know. Right. Okay. I would imagine many. Many. Yeah. <laughs> it's obviously important to their trade dress. Yeah, I, I would hope That's so. I, I, would, I would assume there's there every. I, mean, I, I couldn't tell you if it was at every location, mm -hmm. save one or, or whatnot. It, okay. For Mr. Garrington, every location has one. Now, are they all lit from below, or do they have lights on top, That's or do you? A good question. I've never even bothered to mm -hmm. I, I usually shut my personal engines down around eight thirty and go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Um, are there any other questions? Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, we have five speakers. Okay. Um, Peter Burning, followed by Sandra Schinnebarger. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Peter Burning. I live at uh, 104 Presidential Boulevard which is directly south on the other side of uh, Santera Way. 
Um, I would say back in February and even back in November, uh, myself and our neighbors were, were probably miles apart from what uh, Checkered Flag wanted to do. Right now, I'd say we've moved into about, well, literally 100 feet, and that's the distance of from where their entrance is now that was just discussed to where that new cut through the curb and, and through that buffer zone, right about where that white arrow is. And so um, they want to take the buffer zone, which is fantastic, um, and then basically knock its middle tooth out and, and cut through there to create that entrance and maneuver space uh, for the, the unloading and loading of the car carriers. Even though just down Centera Way, that little spur between Centera Way and Rosemont Road, um, Hyundai Way Drive, I think it's about 400 feet long of private drive, provides plenty of space for loading and unloading of those car carriers. And they've done that and they've been doing that for some time now. So saying that they actually need. Excuse me. Yes. Excuse me. They've done that and have been doing that for some time. I don't yeah. know what you mean by that. Um, previously, they used to do the unloading of the vehicles right there on Centero Way, right behind the houses. Right. And there were cars parked on either side. They had created their own a no parking zone there to do so. Um, they've changed that after we brought it up. They've removed the parking from Centero Way, and they started doing some unloading of car carriers right next to the uh, Jackrabbit storage um, area on their private drive. Sorry to interrupt. I That's fine. I didn't understand what you were saying. So there is plenty of space. Um, they do want to do it on property. Um, that private drive is their property, so they can continue to do it on property. We just want to see that, that buffer, uh, which is great, to remain fully intact. Because once you cut that 26, 27, 8 foot out of it, it really makes the buffer a lot less effective towards the neighborhood. Um, and throughout this process, they have been um, very helpful in, in coming towards and, and helping meet a lot of um, the expectations we expect of a, a neighbor business that sits right next to a residential area. To address the condition 26 with the uplighting, um, I think you've expressed it very well. It just shoots pollution straight up in light pollution straight up into the sky. It reverses a specific condition from 2013 to downlight those flags. And yes, every checker flag uplights those flags, just sending unnecessary light straight up into the sky above the city. Which I'm sure you know the um, comprehensive plan specifically addresses light pollution, and light should be directed downward. Yeah, giving giving them a condition straight up, I think, goes straight against okay. that. All right. Thank you, Mr. Burning. Thank you. Um, are there any questions? You can stay up there. Sure. Okay. I, I've got a couple things. Sure. Um, so, so your thoughts are that the that there are other other opportunities to load and unload. Yes, and they've the demonstrated that way. that can be done. It's a longer walk for the truck drivers. Um, and, and takes a little longer time to do the unloading. Um, that loading with the noisy ramps, the idling trucks, and that would all happen to the east next to a jackrabbit storage and that office park just to the south, completely away from the homes, completely away from any residences. Okay. Um, and I think that's a better solution than cutting through that, that buffer and um, doing it on their property right there. Having that access as shown. Um, okay. Okay. All right. Anything Thank else? you. Any, Mr. Burning? Oh, I do have um, one thing, and but you have no opposition. You know, you've worked with them yes. you know, over these many the past months, yes. many months to yeah. you know to get to this this point um did that come up that access previously or what was that? um that's a, a relatively new layout um and they did provide the drawings a, a little while ago and the more you look at it the more you walk the area you realize that 50 feet isn't that much and a lot of the most mature trees are just beyond that 50 foot that we're going to lose um and then when you did you did you look at the where the right of way starts or ends to where that 50 feet, where the 50 feet starts at the edge of the right of way, or are you taking that from the edge of the pavement? Um, 
edge of the. So looking at their, and I actually did this yesterday. So looking at their scale, the 50 foot starts just on the other side of the sidewalk. Because that's where the right of way starts. Correct. So and so 50 foot in from there is okay. pretty good and saves a whole bunch of trees, which we're very thankful for. But then if you knock out, you know, a wide swath of that, it really cuts that buffer into to two chunks and and really makes it less efficient, I mm -hmm. think. Okay. Just for driving trucks in and out, which they don't really have to do. So their layout is it's a fairly new layout. It is. Compared to what you... What would what did it look like you know over the past couple months? I mean, how's uh, previously like they've said they would take the whole wooded area, and and sort of do with as they please. Um, okay. But I don't That's... believe that cut was there, and there was no buffer at that time. There was no buffer, and there no, was no, no. This... it would have been cut clear. Okay. So this is better. We think the best solution is to keep that buffer fully intact and effective, and then use that other 400 foot of drive to do the the operations on their property. <clears throat> okay. All right. Um, yep. Could you take your pointer and show me where you want this to occur, please? You can't see it on there. It's it's off the map. It's just off the map. Okay. If they could get higher okay. into the east, you would see the jackrabbit storage. Yeah. I, I've been looking at aerials here as we've been okay. talking. It's, it's called Hyundai Way, Hyundai Way Lane. It used to be Driver's World Way Lane. It Marcel, cuts I think the first slide, sorry, sir, the first fine. slide has it on there. Yes. So right there where you see Drivers World Way, mm -hmm. that's a roadway that connects Rosemont to Centerra Way. Yes. It's about two lanes wide, yeah. you know, plenty of space to, to do the offloading there. And they've done it before. I've seen them do it. They don't always have control of the truckers where they, when they arrive and when they do their operations, but over time, I think they would learn to, to use that as the best place to, to conduct that operation. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you. Sandra Schinnebarger, followed by Eve Terlecki. Are we able to pull this up on Google Maps? Um, well, that, that's a pretty big map. You mean a bigger map? Or do yeah, you... to zoom out a little bit. I don't know if you know, by the time that they're able to pull it up on Google Maps that mm -hmm. no, that, that that's a pretty pretty zoomed out map right there. Okay. Uh, but please state your name for the record. I'm Sandra Schinnebarger. I live on the opposite side of Rosemont Road, and I wanted to point out that when you zoom out even further, I was talking to someone at the um, DE, the Department of Environmental Quality, and they pointed out that um, when you zoom out Can further, you speak up? yeah, yeah I oh. can't hear you. When you zoom out further, um, this is the very last um, of, the, of a wooded parcel in quite a large area. Um, we're talking about neighborhoods called Windsor Woods, Windsor Oaks, and Windsor Forest. Um, it is also affecting further down Windsor Gate, Princess Anne Plaza, Thalia, Birchwood, Maralibu, Chimney Hill, et cetera. And, um, so I was just hoping you would all consider the health and property values of the hundreds of taxpaying residents who live all around there while you're also considering, you know, one wealthier resident who's already selling Genesis cars around the corner at a high-end dealership. I'm sorry, ma'am. I didn't catch the last part of what you just said. Oh, the last, we can't hear you. The last, sent, the last, just the last couple of sentences? Oh. Am I repeating them? To just considering the property values and health of hundreds of residents that live all around this larger area, um, while at the same time considering the one wealthier resident that's already selling the Genesis cars around the corner at a high-end dealership on the boulevard. Um, so I, did, did that make sense? Anyway, um, it's... There's a, a lot of people that are going to be affected by this because the, the trees filter the fumes. I don't feel like, um, I just hope commissioners wouldn't want to be remembered as a reason for smog in Virginia Beach and breathing problems like asthma. That's not a good lore for relocating to Virginia Beach, and neither are heat strokes. Um, because these, even when, what I was hoping to show is when you zoom out, even Independence has woods in their clover leaves at that exit ramp and Rosemont doesn't have that like this is the last block of woods in that whole in this whole area like we, we they're they're gone like everything's been paved so I just wanted to point that out also neighbors have repeatedly suggested building upwards 
and building upwards has repeatedly been dismissed for about eight months, even though the company, the Hyundai company, um, they promote a pro-environmental stance. Um, they're, they're, they, they have that on their website that they're known for that. So that's what I was trying to hope to show there. And also as far as preserving the buffer, um, there was also an issue where some trees were removed on VDOT property. And according to VDOT, there was not permission to remove them. And Checkered Flag admitted to doing it, and, and they pointed out that it was a contractor mistake. So I have reason to believe that more mistakes would be made regarding aggressive tree removal. And also wanted to clarify that the city was interested in 3.2 acres, oh, not Mr. the- Mr. Schneeberger, your, your time is up. I'm not sorry. the 1.2 acres, yeah. as far as um, requiring the, um, the woods. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Oh, hold on. Sorry. Are there any questions? My apologies. Are there any questions for Ms. Schneeberger? Okay, thank you. Okay. Eve Terlecki, followed by Arthur Terlecki, and then Bogdan Terlecki. Good afternoon. My name is Eve Terlecki, and I live across from the wooded area. Okay. Can you... Can you Move that up towards, there you go, thank you. Um, in previous meeting, we said how beautiful it is and protect our neighborhood from noise pollution, the wooded area. The effects, the health and well-being of humans and other organisms. The deforce, um, deforestation, the permanent removal of trees to make room for something else like construction or manufacturing is, I think so, is wrong. The, um, this forest beyond our house wasn't planted but by humans. A forest planted by humans then left to nature own devices typically takes at least 100 years to mature. Produce oxygen and absorb carbon dioxide. And like we said before, forests are home for many species. My point, my other point, the lawyer who represent dealership previously said, we cannot predict when drivers will deliver cars due to bad weather, long drive or traffic. Allowing to build a new business, we will have more problems, such things as vibration that cause a walls to crack or toxic vapor that destroys vegetation. More population, traffic noise, night lights. Um, when we bought our house, we thought we would live in quiet, peaceful residential area, not commercial. Um, in 2020, then more than 100 countries pledged to end of reverse deforestation. Virginia Beach City also want to retain its tree canopies. For this reason, I'm against the approval of this conditional use permit, and I request that the council motion for disapproval. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Are there um, any questions? All right, appreciate okay. it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Arthur Terlecki, followed by Bogdan Terlecki. Good afternoon. How's everybody doing? My name is Arthur Terlecki. I live at Wichita Boulevard. Um, I am against this plan. It is kind of the old switcheroo. They presented us with something else, and now they're adding a driveway, and it's completely wrecking the front frontal view of the neighborhood. So as you pull into Presidential Boulevard, um, the first thing you see is the forest behind all the houses. So with that, they're going to be removing a good portion of it, and there's going to be just a gap. We're going to be able to see the dealership for that. So therefore, I'm against it. Um, additionally, I think it should be considered that we build maybe a boundary wall if this does go through. So that way, it could prevent more noise. But overall, I'm against it. So thank you. Okay, are there any um, questions for Mr. Um, Trilecki? Um, I've got one. So yes, you, sir. 
boundary wall. That's new. Is it um like sound barrier wall that you have on the interstate? Mm-hmm. Something even to... on this this on the south side of Center Way or the uh no uh from the interstate because you can still hear everything oh, from, from the, the interstate. interstate. Yeah, because okay. I mean we're gonna be removing a good portion of the woods there, so, and I mean. That buffer zone that is presented right there wasn't what was originally discussed because we wanted to maintain the whole front total view of it. And with that driveway being moved, I don't know, 150 feet maybe, it's just going to get rid of all those mature trees up in the front. So. Okay. Well, I, I thought the discussion was just a few minutes ago that the, um, that the plan originally, you know, was a more expansive parking lot. Yes, it was, but... Um, during the meetings and everything, we discussed that we wanted to keep the frontal view. You and then to maintain that. Yeah, so in the okay. plan that they presented us, it had um, a buffer area where I think it was like a three-foot buffer or whatever, and then the parking lot behind it. So we told them that we wanted to keep the frontal view of the trees and everything. So now they propose this plan where they have a majority of the trees up front, uh, 50 foot. I don't know if that's 50 foot from the street or if that's 50 foot from the start of the property line. But... Uh, now the added driveway is there. What used to be where the red line is on the right-hand side, uh, that area is going to be now a buffer. So they're going to have to replant trees right there in order to uh, close off that street, and they're opening up that driveway all the way on the left. So, and maybe I'd, this may be a question um, for when Mr. Corte and Mr. Garrington come back up. But okay. All right, great. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Final speaker, Bogdan Trelecki. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Bogdan Trelecki. I'm right across the dealership. We moved there in 2001, uh, February. And I say our uh, dealership was uh, very, very small. And I believe so it was called uh, Driver's World. Uh, without uh, any notification, a few years later, I find out that uh, dealer is expanding. They, uh, uh, they were asking once to build a uh, paint shop there. But uh, I guess that uh, uh, some of the neighbors says no, and, and we succeeded that way. But later on, they start expanding the dealership without me knowing about it. Uh, what I'm after, um, we have a, about seven, eight houses right across the dealership there. Uh, that's a uh, uh, residential area. <coughs> and uh, we're getting all this noise, etc. Right by, you know, the seven houses from west to east, we've got commercial area there. We've got the building with the offices. Nobody's there. Nobody, you know, uh, would complain about the noises, vehicles coming in. And now I can see that uh, the dealer is trying to put the driveway right across my house. And, and uh, basically, it's not going to look good, and it's not going to be good for, for all the neighbors. The neighbor is going to go uh, down, <laughs> basically. Uh, the proposal is put the big parking lot from north to south with the 50 feet buffer, which is not a lot. My driveway is 38 feet together with the apron. So what is 50 feet? Uh, why don't we, or why don't you think or why don't they think about putting a, uh, their parking lot closer to the interstate from the west to the east? Leave 200 feet from the center away. Uh, that's all what I have, but please review all this information and, and help us to decide what we want to do. Do we want to keep it neighborhood nice or uh, commercial? Okay. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Are there, you can say, are there any questions? I got a question. Just, I'm, my question is, so you say you live in a residential, right? Yes. But you always knew it was a business 
or commercial across the street? You always knew that? As I said, 21 years ago, uh -huh. the Charlie Barkers or uh, World Drivers was on the right side, close to the... But you always knew it was commercial across the street. Yeah, but in the plans so of the I'm city was no... We checked that. We checked that, that are they going to expand? Not... We, we couldn't find anything. Well, the city didn't know. tell us about let me, it. Let me finish what I'm going to say. Yeah. You never know if it's a business property what they're going to do in the future. They could knock every tree down and put a building without doing this use permit. Yes. They're offering something. And that's where I'm confused because they're offering a buffer. They're offering ways to try and get what you want, but they could... If this doesn't go, they could build a building and all trees go. Every one of them. You're right. Because it's a business lot across from your residential lot. So I'd be okay if I open bed and breakfast in my house right oh, across the street? You're residential. What? Well, it's just only a 50 feet of street. You're a residential lot. Well, thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. <laughs> All right, um, Mr. Garrington and Mr. Corte. Real quick, Mr. Chairman, because Kyle Corte wants to have one last final word, too. <laughs> but if you take the, what the last gentleman just told you, he's talking about why we don't take this parking lot and move it closer to the Interstate 264. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem we're doing that is, is that you take all this mature trees down, it's blocking the noise that's coming off the interstate. So you haven't really accomplished anything by increasing the buffer up here and taking all those trees down. By leaving those trees along the interstate, it, it, it'll help block some of that tr noise that's coming off the interstate. And you also heard Mr. Bernick say that when we were here back in February, we were miles apart, and now we're within a driveway entrance and a light on a flagpole. That's how much we have conceded and how much we have worked together. So you got to admit that we have tried to do our best we can to be a good neighbor and get along with the people who live in the, in, on the presidential board. Okay. Um, all right. My, uh, thank you. My, uh, the thing I was pleased to hear is Mr. Burning report the efforts of the neighborhood and, and Checkered Flag and, and coming together and trying to find a solution because he's exactly right. We were miles apart. And uh, you know, Mr. Burning's taken the lead in the neighborhood. And he's been very reasonable as, as far as meeting with, with us, communicating with, with Checkered Flag and trying to find a, a resolution. And likewise, you know, I, I am an advocate for him, but I believe Checkered Flag's done the same thing. They've been very, very, very uh, willing to think outside the box and, and listen to solutions and the one potential solution and, and that you know we've you know, with Mr. Bernie and myself the communications as far as this drive aisle are, are relatively recent within the last uh, as far as the discussions of how we could come to a place where we could all agree that it's not what we want but it's what we could live with uh, have been within the last couple of days and so uh, the issue he raised today I had not heard before and that is why uh, we can't continue to offload up there next to the jackrabbit and why that can't be the preferred location. And the reason for that is part of this application is the development of that new, uh, that new showroom, the Genesis showroom. And that would impact, once you, you know, now there's nothing there, it's parking. But when we flip it and put that Genesis showroom there, it eliminates the possibility to use that on a day-to-day -day basis as a drive lane for the, mm -hmm. the drop off of the vehicles. And so I just wanted to address that one item. And I'll take any other questions or clarifications. Any other questions? Mr. Redmond? Mr. Redmond. Just so I understand, sure. you don't own, well, let's go ahead and call the Grassy Knoll. Yes, sir. That's owned by Runnymede, I think? It is. We're under contract. And now you're under contract to purchase that. We, we are under contract. Yes, sir. We're under contract to purchase that. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Did you get that? Grassy Knoll. Mm. Uh-huh. Mm. Um, sir? The, so explain a little bit about the size of that parking lot. Like, you've talked about employee parking. Give us a little bit about your know, background about the employee parking and you know who's going in that additional parking space, parking area. Yeah. Um, historic. Well, when this this application was first brought before uh, your body and then city council, there were issues with uh, employees parking on Centera Way. It's public parking on Centera Way. Uh, the employees, for one reason or another, elected um, instead of you know going to eat lunch in their car on site, they would park their car on Centera Way and, and go eat lunch there. Um, we candidly uh, didn't have any objection to them doing that, and we'd never heard any, or Checkered Flag had never heard any objection from the community. 
but in going through the application process, part of the uh, requirement for having a business is you have somewhere for your, your folks to park while they work. And we did, or we do currently, uh, it just, for whatever reason, they weren't doing it. And so since that time is a way to, to uh, you know, that was one of the big objections with the community. And we're not hearing much about, just out of everyone's time, we're not hearing about a bunch of the problems we've solved. And that was one of the problems. And so on that plan right now where you see the drive aisle where the vehicles will be dropped off, that's going to be the dedicated, quote unquote, employee parking, uh, such that we know, you know, this we're told is a company policy. That's where you go park your vehicle while you're, while you're working here. We're hoping it's a checkered flag line that we sell, but it's going to be on that corner of the, of the parking lot. And, and that'll keep them off the, or the intent is to keep them off the street so that it doesn't clog the, uh, the, the right of way there. Okay. So the employees are all the way to the left or wherever designated within that. Yes. And then the rest of the parking is for the operation of the business. It's yes. It's for customers and for? Customers and display. And supply. Yes, sir. And mm -hmm. it's only, it's, it's a sales, so there's, it, there's a service component as well, but it'll be vehicles that are being serviced or sold at, at the dealership. Mm -hmm. Well, who came up with the configuration? Like, was that your engineer or who was the? Uh, yeah, the MSA. We initially, MSA. initially when on the previous application, we had the, let me use this thing instead of pointing. Uh, we had the, this dealership was on that, was the whole wood, wooded lot was developed with that showroom there. So in order to make this work, the initial plan was to, or the, the new plan was to put this here next to the Jackrabbit storage. And then we wanted to take the least amount of this wooded parcel as we could. And the idea of a coming, I mean, we're at the point where we don't have much more room. I mean, right now, if you drive by there, just because of the inventory shortage that you hear everyone talking about, there, there looks like there's plenty of space. But when things get back, hopefully when they get back to normal, there'll be plenty of vehicles on lot. So, the, the number of, the, of parking spaces, or of, of we call them display spots, is, is the minimum that we can have. And the reason for that is the concession to the, to the neighborhood to allow that portion to remain wooded and not, not paved as a parking lot. Does that answer your concern think, or address your concern? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I think just some of the residents were looking at the, the layout and the configuration in more of an east-west direction so it would push into the one acre I think is what they're while providing buffer along Centura Way I think that's that was their their hope and their intent was to was to have um, you know, that buffer you know between the parking lot and Centura Way um, and I think you heard some discussion the initial plan um, when we met with the neighborhood uh, showed showed this dealership being put here and then the parking lot here, but didn't have any landscaping here. It was just the typical city required street frontage. So that was the, the portion that was added to address some of that concern as far as the aesthetics and the visuals, as far as the, you know, the concerns that were addressed. And that was the, the, the solution that's been proposed, which I understand is, is it's been well received, save and except we have to have it, we have to have an entranceway there at some point. Uh, you know, for the, the vehicles to be dropped off. Okay. Okay. All right. Anything else? <clears throat> thank you for your time. Okay. Thank you. No more speakers. No more speakers. Okay. Questions, staff. Staff question. Do we have a traffic count for Centera Way, or is it too small to be recorded? Does anybody know? Looks I don't like know no. is a fair answer if you don't know. Like no. I don't want to speak for Rick Lerman. He's, he's back there. But if you look on page 10 of the staff report, it says present volume, no data available, but it does note the capacity. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm gonna you know close in and just open up you know discussion between the planning commissioners. And I think it's it's fair to be able to you know ask questions of staff at this time. Um, one question I do have is about the 
Um, this isn't necessarily about the right away that's along the uh, the off ramp, but it's just right away in general, um, and being able to to get in there, and maintain and clear right away. So I don't know if anybody on staff can help explain that, because we have you know a couple things. One is you know where their uh, their pond is to the north. There's um, there's right away between you know that between the business and the the off ramp itself, the pavement. Um, and it appears that checkered flag maintains that right away. You know, they they go in and they they mow the grass, I think, and that that should have been a good question. Is that they? I mean, the, the portion. I'm sorry. The portion that is appropriate to answer. The portion yeah. That is VDOT property. The VDOT they, property. The yes. VDOT property. Yes, sir. They have the, an arrangement with VDOT. They have an, an arrangement with VDOT. Okay. Which I don't know if that's standard. There's not. Um. So there's that. That you know, it seems like there's conditioned in there to to maintain the the right of way, you know, in its current state, or not in its current state, but, you know, with, um, you know, not to clear the trees. Um, but what ability do they have to clear the trees that are in between the parking lot and the interstates? You know, one person brought up a, a sound barrier, you know, adjacent to 264, but I, you know, the trees themselves um, provide a sound barrier. So what is, can anybody answer that? You know, what the what their ability is, some of that city property that's in there. So Chairman Wall, if you, it's hard to see on this uh, plan, but there's remnant right of way uh, to the, which would be the north of the, uh, of the proposed parking lot uh, that is public, that is owned by the city of Virginia Beach. No one could go in there without permission of the city to clear those trees. Um, but there are remnant parcels and right of way that are owned by the city. Okay, so there's some city and then there's some VDOT right of way. The VDOT portion is the portion that is adjacent to immediately a part of the off ramp for 264, mm -hmm. which is the portion that they currently maintain. Right. That portion that's wooded now currently is a mixture of parcels and right of way that are owned by the city. Okay, so that's that's going to be maintained in perpetuity generally, unless somehow they had. Um, some kind of agreement with the city or they went in illicitly and, and cleared that tree. So that's a buffer that's going to be maintained. Um, I just want to point that out that it's, you know, they don't have the ability to, to clear that like they've done over to the right where, you know, not only do they have the pond there, they have, um, you know, between the, the property line and the pavement where they've, they're clearing, and I, um, I just have to trust that that's you know accurate that they have an agreement with VDOT, and I've I've heard under my understanding that that's common, that you can ask VDOT and they will allow you to to maintain the the right of way. And does any, can anybody confirm that? Um, that there are other businesses that do that do similar, and it's been mentioned to me that. You have it in writing that they don't have an agreement to maintain but Well, that's right. Okay. But my point is that there's a, a fairly large buffer currently that's going to be maintained um, in, between the parking lot and and the road, and 264. All right, so this is this is open to discussion. So, <laughs> um, does anybody have anything else? Well, I'm I'm certainly going to support the application. I don't think this is all that hard. If you take a building and you drop it in the middle of the parking lot, which they have up near the Jack Rabbit now, you're dropping that on top of what was you know, a parking asset, then you're going to have to have more parking. So now they've come up with a parking lot instead of the functional dealership, which was a matter of some concern. Um, I, for the life of me, can't figure out what is so unusual about a parking lot and an entranceway to the parking lot. I mean, they do have a buffer there, but the idea that there's going to be forever a continuous buffer 
You, you can't, how, will you chop her into the parking lot? Uh, I mean, it's going to have to have access, and it seems to me, simply from a site design process, where they have that entrance located makes the most sense. I'll bet you the traffic count on Santerra Way is minuscule. That's why you don't have any data available on it, is because they don't do counts that are that small. The traffic that's going to be going back there is going to be, I think, very, very small. They answered the concerns that they could answer. They addressed the things that they could address. I mean, you know, with a lot of moving parts, I mean, they moved big parts around, big parking lots and buildings and, and some of these other smaller items that have to do with things. I think um, they've gone a very, very long way to try and, and come up with a satisfactory solution. I don't know how you can do it any better than that. Well, you should offload over here. You should, I mean, you know, you can always come up with something. What do you want, Chinese food? No, nah, Mexican. I don't want Mexican. All right, well, how about some Italian? I don't know. You can always come up with something else. But, you know, I, I don't know how much more you can do than what they have done. And it's a lot. Um, so uh, it seems to me it's, a, it's an appropriate solution to their need to expand. It's not unusual, it seems to me, for um, a thriving business to want to expand. They, 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 I don't know how else they can do it than what they've proposed. As for the lighting, how in the world it makes a difference where that flagpole is located, whether you light it up or you light it down, I, can't, I just can't imagine. Um, so that, that doesn't seem to me to be to a whole lot of water. It just doesn't hold a lot of water. It's up against the BMP and, and, and 264 for crying out loud. So I mean, I, I think they've gone a long way. I certainly support the application. I hope others will too. And, and um, you know, at the end of the day, the city's going to end up with 1.3 acres of open space, mm -hmm. of wooded, well, not open space, wooded. They wouldn't have had that. Before. And they wouldn't have had it. So, I mean, you know, and it, it belongs to someone. It's not, this isn't city property. It's not a public resource. It's a private resource. You know, somebody owns that, and this company is buying it. Um, so the notion that they're going to develop, you know, a small part of it and give the rest of it away strikes me as something that's rather positive and, you know, and, and not, um, you know, and not negative. I've said too much, so thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, well, I've got a, I've got a couple things. So I, I, I kind of concur. I mean, I think that, you know, there are a couple of schools of thought here, and I think that it's, it's private property at this point. Um, you know, there's, there's the school of thought where you, you know, need to preserve his wood. I would love to do that. I mean, I, but I, you know, we don't necessarily have that as, you know, something we can, we ourselves, you know, can leverage that, that much. Um, then there's the, you know, reconfiguration in order to maximize the buffer, and um, that's a possibility. But at the same time, you know, they have a, a certain amount of parking spaces that they, that they need, um, you know, with this business. And, and you know, the calculations, um, you know, are typically what they are. You know, the, the, they've got customers, showroom or show vehicles, and they have employees. And, you know, we, you know there's been much discussion about parking on, on Centura Way. And that parking is now shifted into the parking lot. And it, it's probably a, a better thing to have it off. You know, it's going to be less busy. Um, you know, the employees will be parking on, you know, in the parking lot. You know, generally hidden, you know, by the um, existing material landscaping, you know, that's, they'll be parking against or wherever they you know, put them in the parking lot. But... Um, and then there's the the compromise, um, which you know appears you, know, you know, kind of as is. You know this um, this layout and the entrance, and you know as, as much as I I would love to say or you know, to either defer or to you know recommend you know an additional condition to to remove that entrance. It just from a traffic flow, even if it's not um, even if it's not to drop off vehicles, that it it just makes you know, sense one way or the other to have an entrance there um, in order to, to access that, that point. And, you know, I mean, I, I don't necessarily like it, and I, I, I you know, feel for the, the people that live there, but I don't, I don't know one way or the other if it's going to be, you know, super negative. Um, ideally, there wouldn't be an entrance there. Ideally, there wouldn't be a parking lot there, but I, I don't know if, if that's um, if that's going to be the case with this, you know, application. 
um, or with this, you know, the site. Um, so I, I'm going to, I'm going to support it. Um, and yep, so I'm going to call for a motion. Mr. Redmond. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of the application. Okay. I second it. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Redmond and a, a second by Ms. Oliver. Vote is open. Mr. Clemens, can we get your vote, please? Yeah. Oh, okay. A recorded vote of 10 in favor, zero against. Agenda item number six has been recommended for approval. Chairman, members, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. All right. Any other, any other business? Just, Mr. Chairman, just as a reminder, this is our last meeting in, in the current city hall. Mm -hmm. Our, I guess, old city hall, council, city council chambers. Um, we have been told not to take anything off the walls, but you are free to take your nameplates if you want to. Um, and we will be meeting uh, at, at a minimum on at the next uh, Planning Commission public hearing in the new city council chambers in the new Building 1. We do plan on trying to schedule security training and a tour uh, as necessary for those that can participate within the next coming weeks. Um, but we're... We're trying to get that slammed in with the rest of the schedule. So uh, please stay tuned to your emails. Yes, sir. Okay. W where's the room? <laughs> no, it's uh, a. What, what floor? So city council chambers are on the second floor. Right when you walk into the new city hall, you, you can actually see the chambers on the second floor. So you okay. just walk up the steps. I never set foot in there. Oh, you need the tour. It's okay. pretty cool. Okay, hold on. Let's let's adjourn. Let's so adjourn the meeting. Then. <laughs> okay, formal session is adjourned. Will I will I present ID and get us in there?